This is a free download from the BBC. For more information, go to bbc.co.uk slash podcasts. You reckon? You gotta go with it. Go with it. You got to go with it. Yeah. You got to go oh, with it. I'm freestyling. Go with it. Oh. You got to go with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go with it. Ooh, you got to go with it. I said, go with it. You got to go I with it. I get really off putting that you're yeah, both yeah, looking yeah. at me. Go with it. You got to go with it. Ooh. Go with it. You got to go with it. Okay. Go with it. You got to go with it. Yeah, okay. I get go it. Go with it. Ooh, you got to go, 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 go with it and go with it. Me and Kels are the best songwriters you've ever met, and you don't join in because you are not as good as us. I'm Lennon. I'm Ringo. Uh, you are not as good as us, and you are bitter and twisted. Your soul is twisted. Untwist your soul. A soul that is twisted is a painful soul. Ah, souls. I love them, but not the twisted kind. Yeah? Yes. I've met uh... Noel Gallagher. He's no. quite a good songwriter. Yeah. You know, you? Do you know what you got to do? Wait, hang on. I say met him, he winked at me. Same Ooh. thing. I've met Liam Gallagher. Yes. What a different radio station where cool oh, people man. came in. I met Liam Gallagher. I got in Paul Weller's way once. Do you know what you need to do, Kath? I've been out for a drink with Noddy Holder. Do you know what you need to do, Kath? That ruined it. Yeah. Go with it. Oh, no. You've got to go with it. Oh. Go with it. Mm. You've got to go with it. I was just it. saying that, not for boasting, but to go say I, ha- I do know better you've songwriters. Got to go with it. Go, 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 go with it. Yeah. You've got to go, 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 go with it. Although, admittedly, that is a good one. Yeah, Kelly. It's not that good. Welcome to the podcast. It's jam packed. You've heard the intro. It was us jamming. I'm Ian Lee. This is some stuff. Quick, press play. Not you, suckers. Her. Matt, you've been uh, out on the streets. I have, with some very interesting results. Yep. Uh, JVS has now waded into the debate as well. OK, Jonathan Vernon-Smith on at nine o'clock. Yep. Always a good listen, unless yep. he, what he's about to uh, be quoted on saying is uh, disagrees with me. What did, what did he say? This is Matt came in late, not been bothered to say sorry. He is calling for my immediate res- resignation from yep. this station. Wow, well, yeah. Well, uh, good I, point. Good point well made. JVS, as always, on the button. Maybe, maybe JVS wants to phone into the show and we'll speak to him on, on oh, the wait, line. 459 That's the phone number. Uh, Jonathan's on the line. Morning, Jonathan. Morning, Ian. What would you like to say? Uh, I felt compelled to call in this morning. I'm such an idiot. Uh, I'm such an idiot. Go on, yes. I felt compelled to call in Why this is that, morning. Jonathan? What would you like to say? Well, I, I'm not sure that I'm going to be edited out of Matt Lockwood's interview. Um, he accosted me in the car park this morning as I yes. arrived at BBC Three Counties Radio. Uh-huh. Um, and having listened to you this morning, I'd already built up quite a head of rage yes. in the car. Yes. Um, when he accosted me, he tried to uh, engage me with some kind of support for him. Yeah. For his lateness, felt, his late arrival at work, uh, and his lack uh, of apology. Absolutely. And yeah. as I suggested to him, uh, he should be sacked immediately. And in fact, if he worked on my, my programme, mm. um, he, wouldn't be, no. he wouldn't be in the building now. Well. He'd be out of the building. He then pursued me um, quite threateningly. Oh, gosh. He followed me to the studio despite my repeated um, attempts to get rid of him. He's got a very queer walk, hasn't he? Very strange, he, menacing. He, he, was, he was threatening. Yeah. And dare I say... Ever so slightly paparazzi. He has, he has worked on your show in the past, hasn't he? Uh, once. And, and what happened there? Why did that relationship end? Uh, it didn't work out. Let's, let's just leave it at that. I won't go into no, okay. the okay. minutiae of it. It didn't work out. Matt, would you like to respond? I'm just going to stay silent right now. Silence is golden. Well, do, you, do you know what I make up from your silence? That you are embarrassed, that you are ashamed, that you realise you've made a terrible mistake, that a senior no. member no, of no, staff no. Uh, is, is speaking correctly and uh, you, uh, you agree with everything he says? I agree with nothing he says. He's not even in the building, he's just on his phone. The, the, the fact he's, is... He's through there, he's in the other studio, I can see him, I'm looking at him now, just through there. The, the, the fact is a lot of young people want to work in this industry. Here we go. Young yep. people who would get out of bed two hours early... I used to do that. ...into the building. I used to do that. And you turn up five minutes before a show is going to start. You are an utter disgrace. Jonathan and Luton, thank you very much for your call. You see? 
That's Jonathan from Luton, poning you. I don't think he did. I don't really know. Do you want another quick story? Give us a quick one. Give us a quick one. A woman has... This is in The Sun, yes. page 22. She said that there's a, a tattoo that her friend uh, freehandly drew... Freehandly. On, freehandly, yeah. freehandly. Drew it on her shoulder, and it's actually ruined her life. Uh, it happened when They she used was to 20. call me freehandly at school, but that's <laughs> for a completely different thing altogether. No, she was 17. She woke up the next day... Kelly. Yep. She woke... That. Get off. She woke up the next day and thought, what have I done? Yeah. The tattoo? Yeah. Of a willy. Hey, no. Where's this? Where's her willy? Shoulder. Oh, shoulder willy. Mm. We had... Um, <clears throat> do, uh, we, I don't know if you were here. <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat. Uh, we spoke to the most tattooed woman in, in the country. Yeah, I was here. And her face is covered with tiny willies. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Why don't you get a willy... T- I saw a fella in Shepherd's Bush. with He was wearing shorts and it, the, his calf was a willy. Wow. Crazy, isn't it? People have them anywhere now, don't they? Matt, where would you put a willy? Don't answer that. Kath was away on Monday and something odd happened. Kelly grew up into a woman. Wow. An annoying woman that looks like a child. And she produced some grown-up radio for grown-ups. Not kids, kids. Adults. It's not blue. It's not raunchy. It's mature. She's only 11. Can you just quickly say, um, Kelly, lovely, um... Kelly, lovely, um... And great. And great. Why? Because I'm going to edit that oh. around. Kelly, she's only lovely and great. Boris Johnson, in the light of... Uh, and isn't it interesting, in the light of uh, um, uh, loads of people being murdered by some dodgepots, um, is uh, starting, starting to make a political statement. He is not that bothered with civil liberties stuff. Uh, and um, he thinks we should be... Uh, he says, quote, I'm not particularly interested in this civil liberties stuff when it comes to these people's emails and mobile phone conversations. If they're a threat to our society, then I want them properly listened to. OK, fine. Who are these people? If he can monitor those people, and I don't know who they are, then he can monitor you. Do you want your emails and your phone calls monitored, Paul, in Northampton? Uh, good morning, Ian. Good morning, boss. Um, they already do. Sorry? Uh, and they, ha- they already um, scan through every email and every text and every phone call that has been made since the invention of computers. Who, right, well, um, uh, uh, no, they don't. They do. How can they? How have they got the manpower to scan through every email and phone quite call sim- and text? Quite simply, the, the invention of the computer, as I say. Well, that's where, um, where the emails come from, yes. Well, let's put it this way. Um, there was a big thing in the news last year that all phone providers have to keep a record of every call and text and email for one year in case of any in the eventualities. Right. Um, they, they, GCHQ, which is our big spying place, uh, receives every email and every electronic messaging um, sort of send, way of sending messages, um, and they filter through via computers and find keywords. When they found these keywords, mm. or anything that they believe could be suspect in any way, a person will then go through well, those emails and texts. Right, but, but, but first of all, that's nonsense. There are millions, and someone will let me know how many emails are sent every day. There are millions of emails sent every day, right? Millions, OK? Yeah. So if I, write, if I write, um, hey, uh, Kelly, I've got lots of bombs and guns, shall we meet up on Saturday? That's going to go to GCHQ, is it? That, that, along with every single text and email, will go to GCHQ. Right, yes. OK, here's an idea. You know terrorists, I know they're stupid, but they're not that stupid. They're going to write in code, aren't they? Yes, and that's why they look for key words. Well, what are the key words? What are the key words, then? Well, I'm, I don't work at GCHQ, so I can't oblige you with that information. Well, I, I, I don't... I, 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 this I, does go on. I, I, but they... Co- I don't think it does, Paul, and I don't know. I mean, well, I... Well... I hate to tell you, Ian, it does. How do you it's know this? On. How it's do you know this? My father's ex-forces. Right. Well, what did he do in the forces? Um, well, I, I'm not obliged to tell you that. Well, what, was he a top but spy or was he... Uh... Ian, Ian, believe me, Paul, believe I, me Paul. when I say this happens. Paul, I, and I, it I, has I, been happening. Paul, you understand why I can't, I can't just believe you because your dad was in the army? No, no, no. Well, I'm hoping now that there are lots of people out there who are listening to this and will go, yes, actually, Paul is actually correcting well, what he's saying second. Ian, is and Paul... ring in and tell you. OK. Ian? Yeah? Is Paul correcting what he says? His dad was in the army. I think 
think Paul's been watching too much telly and he's got too many channels on his satellite system. If you think that they're reading all of our emails and texts, um, you know, it's unbelievable. Absolutely crazy. They've got their, their people, they probably read some people's uh, emails and texts, but these are the ones that they're after. And they, they're, they're after intelligence stuff, but they're not looking at mine, I can assure you. You're crazy, Paul, they're not monitoring Ian. No, well, they may not be monitoring, but they are monitoring every electrical uh, messaging device. That's all I'm going to say on the subject. You can dispel me, you can put me down, whatever you wish, but I know it to be true, but, but and I, get, I stand by my conviction. But, but how, do, again, I don't know, understand how you know it to be true. It, it's irrelevant how I know it to be true. Well, no, it's, it's, re- it's really, really relevant how you know it to be true. Well, all I'm going to do is, is leave you with it, because um, you, you obviously want right. to dispel what I'm saying. Well, no, because, because um, Ian no, thinks you're well, talking rubbish. No, Tell him no, well, why you're not. Yeah. <laughs> I am not talking rubbish, and I just hope that somebody who does know will actually come out and tell you the truth as well. Look, wake up, world. This is what's happening. It's been happening a long time. Kels, would you like to do this little, new little bit? Something wonderful happened this week. We found... What are you doing that voice for? <laughs> oh, I, mean, I don't know. OK, try again. Okay. Run, up, run up to it. I like your hair today. Thanks. You crimp, crimped it. Is that crimping? No, it's uh, curly. Yeah, so you crimped it? No. You had a crimper? No. Well, it looks crimped. It's not. Well, what is it? It's curled, mate. With a crimper? No. Why? What's wrong anyway. with crimping, Kath? It's very it's 80s. 80s. You need to get with it, mate. 80s are, 80s are uh, in again. Well, I've been spending a lot of time with Justin, so... We had a crimper when I was a kid, yeah. and I would always do my sister's hair, and then when it was her turn to do mine, I would run away. Yeah, that'll learn it. Yeah. Don't get it. Anyway, nice crimping. Carry on. Thanks. Sorry if, you're crimp- if I'm crimping your style. Uh. <laughs> oh, I've got crimp in my leg. OK. <laughs> hey! Do you want some crimpets? Cheese and crimpets? <laughs> yes, please. Something wonderful happened this week. Yep. It was actually the best thing that yep. I've ever witnessed. OK, mate. We found the new reggae Christmas. As this you is know. what happened. No. Okay. As this you... is what happened. Uh, it's here. This is what happened. That was it. This is what happened. Kath Kicker. No. Oh, ow. As you know, yeah, her leg is made of chair. <laughs> it's a waste of time me talking to you because you well, won't you, listen to what Dave... Well, you, you're turning it around. I'm not. I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what Dave said. How is that turning it around, Matty Bum Bum? You're turning it around too far. Hey, Matty Bum Bum, calm yeah, down. you make me bloody sick. Hey, man. Matty Bum Bum, calm down. Yeah. Hey, Matty Bum Bum, calm down. There you go. You're doing exactly... Hey, Matty Bum Bum. Hey, Matty Bum Bum. Calm down. Hey, Matty Bum Bum. Calm down. Hey, Fatty Bum Bum. Calm down. The sweet sugar dumpling. I calm down. Hey, Fatty Bum Bum. I calm down. Let me tell you something. I calm down. No, not because you're so big and fat. Don't believe I'm afraid of. Hey, fatty boom boom, I calm down. The sweet sugar dumpling, I calm down. Hey, fatty boom boom, I calm down. Let me tell you something, I calm down. Did I look like most but a one dollar bread? I wouldn't stop trying till I drop down dead. Never let your big size fool you. The cooler day I be cool.
סתם. מה? 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 Lee's on the line. Good morning, Lee. Morning. What would you like to say, sir? Well, I was talking about funerals. Last year, my brother-in-law rung me up and said that this old boy who used to watch us play football had died. Um, we didn't know him that well, but we knew his son and we thought we'd go along. So I met him on a Tuesday. We went down there, went in the crematorium, and we sat in there, and yeah. people started coming in, and we, we weren't going to recognise anyone anyway, really. No. We didn't, we didn't see anyone, you oh, know, and... No. Uh, This old boy, George, we thought, oh, well, we, you know, we, we went out of, you know, out of respect, like you do. Yeah. And um, it filled up, and, it, and the, the, old, uh, the old guy started talking away, and we thought, well, we don't, still don't know anyone, but at least we've turned up, you know, makes Good us feel better. It makes and, you uh, feel better. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, he started talking about this 80-year-old woman called June. <laughs> Did she like football? <laughs> I said, I said, his name wasn't June, was it? His name wasn't June! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you, you've gone there, what, you've gone there too early, had you, Lee? We've gone a week early. <laughs> 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 we've gone a week early. I said to him, check your phone. We couldn't get up and get out. We couldn't, we couldn't go out. I said, check your phone. He checked his phone. Yeah, we were here a week early, he said. <laughs> We both had a day off work and everything got dressed up. <laughs> and you stayed for the whole funeral? We had to stay and then, we, you know, we sort of shook hands with a few people we didn't know and, and we went off down the pub. You went with we them? Made, we made a day of it. We, we went to Stony Stratford. Did you, hang out, few... with, did you hang out with the... Did you go to the wake afterwards? Yeah, yeah well, only for a little while. <laughs> only for a little while! Oh, that's all right, then. But, but then we, we went to the funeral the following week, George's funeral, and Elvis, obviously everyone had heard about it, so we were the talk of the day, you know. <laughs> but the food was better at, the, at June's. <laughs> oh, June sounds like a really special woman. Lee, thank, <laughs> you, thank you so much for that. Morning, Ian! What would you like to say, Ada? You are so... So, I'm, I'm so what? Your phone cut out just at the vital word in that sentence. You are so annoying, Ian. Seriously. You, why am I that annoying? I'm fucking annoying, so Martin Bum Bum should come and get you and crack your head with a... What, 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 what was annoying about Matty Bum Bum? What was annoying? <laughs> that, that was a really annoying song. It's a good song. <laughs> it was funny, but it's... Have you, have you got a fatty Bum Bum? Is that what it is? <laughs> is you, have you got a fatty bum bum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a fatty bum bum. Then yeah, bring her this song <laughs> celebrates fatty bum bums. <laughs> Ada, come and see. You ready? You're going to sing with me, yeah? You're going to join in, Ada, and together we're going to celebrate your fatty bum bum and wait for the complaints to come rolling in. Here we go. You ready? Hey, fatty bum bum. I calm down. Sweet sugar dumpling. I calm down. Sing it, Ada. Come on, Fatty Bum Bum. Calm down. You sweet sugar dumpling. You not having it, Ada? It's lovely to hear you laugh, my dear. Ta-ta. This is a tune, eh, Dealey? Hey, Fatty Bum Bum. I calm down. A sweet sugar dumpling. Last year, the law regarding forced marriage changed. It became a criminal offence. Well, we spoke to a Klima Bibi who escaped and divorced her husband and is rebuilding her life and helping others. Well, a claim of story led to, to this rather shocking call. This woman that came up from Luton, now, the second time that she fell for this blow, did she do it out of desperation? Why do you say that? Uh, because that's what I did. It was like desperation and to try and prove everybody wrong. Well, what happened to you, Mohammed? Uh, well, the first time I was 17, when I was to Pakistan with my parents, um, they said we're going on holiday, etc. Got there, I had uncles and aunties there. In the third week... Um, I noticed that my passport had gone. And then all of a sudden, the pressure built up on me. Uh, you're going to marry this person, etc. I had no way back home, didn't know what I was doing. Third day, I got married. Um, week after, I was back in this country. As soon as I came back, I ran away. Um, when I came here, I told you I ran away for five years. I got into bad ways, on depression tablets, etc. 
started on drugs. Then my eldest brother brought me back home. After that, we went. Um, I met somebody um, in London where I was working, and she was from Pakistan as well. So got married to this woman, and then say about six months into the marriage, all hell broke loose. Whereas one of her brothers had come over, moved into our flat, etc., and. She was pregnant at the time, and then the next thing I know, in the morning, the police have turned up at the door that I've actually abused her, I've been hurting her, etc. I went through hell, basically. Um, and you hadn't done anything to her? Nothing, nothing whatsoever. Now, uh, when this first incident happened, I went to a solicitor to seek advice. I actually paid for a private investigator, uh, because one of my best friends, who was going through a similar situation, he said to me, get a private investigator in. He put recording device in the house. In the second week, four times the police turned up at my house. I was ejected from my own property, but we had um, evidence, audio evidence, that I did not do anything wrong. And what conspired was that this person had only married me for a visa, so they got ejected from this country. Now I'm married to uh, someone from this country, the happiest person I could be. Can we? I'm kind of speechless, man. I'm also really naive because I was completely unaware. I thought that forced marriage, it was parents doing it to their daughters. It never even occurred to me. Oh, believe me, I've got four mates it's happened to because when you go oh, over fellas. there. You, yeah, blokes, when you go over there, you're a young person, you've got all this family around you, never seen. You get your passport taken off you and you don't know what to do. This is what happens. You must have been terrified. So I was. I went on crack cocaine for five years, mate. And is that... Do, do, you, do you trace the, your, your drug addiction back to, to, to that forced marriage? Definitely. Because it's like um, you found something, then you lost it, and you trusted pe- people that brought you into this country, i.e. your mother and father. Yeah. And your... your uh, did you speak to your parents now? Are they still around? Um, I sp- my dad, unfortunately, died five years ago. Don't speak to my mother whatsoever. I've got five beautiful children now, yeah. and none of my kids, we have to- I've told my children everything what happened, and none of my kids even want to see a member of my family. Uh, Mohammed, I, um, very rarely am I speechless, but your, your call has shut me up. I really appreciate you, uh, you giving us a call this morning. No problem. Well, just to say this woman from Luton, I've really felt for her this morning, and she's a very brave person to come on the radio station. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, mate. Now, here's a fun game I like to play in my car. For the next song, I change the words Sergeant Rock to Justin Dealey, and it works. Uh, Justin Dealey's gonna help me uh, Make the girl mine, keep her stood in line uh, Justin Dealey's gonna help me I make the girl mine, keep her stood in line I make the girl mine, wave the victory sign As you know, I am a sportsman. I flippin' love sport. I know all the types of sports there are. There's the ones with the balls, the ones with the sticks, the one with the bats, the one with the um, the hands. All of the sports, the what ones the played... Ones, what are the ones with the hands? Huh? What are the ones with the hands? Karate! I know sporting language and stuff. Here's the Ev. We got a tweet from someone here, Kells. Mm-hmm. I had a couple of tweets the other day from people saying you were hot. Uh, but this fella's Hi. saying, I'm living and listening in the West Midlands, but a bit of Kelly Betts in the morning will do on 3CR. That's nice. Who sent it? Adam Pardon. Hmm? Adam Pardon. Hmm? It's not quite right, is it? No, we no. need to work on that. You do, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. West Ham are through to the fourth round of the FA Cup after beating Everton 9-8 on penalties. The match ended 2-all after extra time. Everton had played for more than an hour with 10 men. But their goalkeeper, Robles, missed his spot kick and West Ham's Adrenan scored his to set up a tie with Bristol City. Here's the West Ham boss, Sam Allardyce. What really worried me, 
because Everton have been a pretty bogey team recently. It was when Stewart missed his penalty and I thought, here we go again. In tennis, Britain's Kyle Edmund and Liam Brody both won their first ever matches in Australian Open qualifying. Edmund beat Tristan Lamessine of France in straight sets and Brody was also a straight sets winner over the ninth seed, Farouk Dustoff. BBC Three Counties Radio News and Sport. I'm back with a full bulletin at seven. Just having a little Farouk dust off there. <laughs> Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. I need, BBC uh... Three Counties Radio. Oh, I need to check two things. First of all, what did that football man say? Because Everton have been a pretty bogey team recently. He did say Everton have put a bogey team. What's that? Because Everton have been a pretty bogey team recently. <laughs> Does he mean pony? Because Everton have been your bogey team recently. Because Everton have been your pretty bogey team recently. What on earth does that mean? Let's just, can we... Uh, so what's the third word? Let's just listen to that again, hang on. It is so close to my home. And what did he say? Because Everton have been your pretty bogey team recently. Because Everton have been your bogey team recently. Because Everton, if anyone wants to phone up and, and say this, you can. 08459 four double five five double five. Because Everton do 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 bogey team recently. Because Everton have been a pretty bogey team recently. What does that mean? Is he, do, is he, is he, is he saying pitchiner? Is Everton a pitchiner? Because Everton have been a pretty bogey team No, recently. he's not. <laughs> this is brilliant. Not only does he say it, but we played it out on the radio. So this is an interesting factual thing that someone's got to... Here's an expert. Because Everton have been a pretty bogey team recently. <laughs> the, the reporter should have said, sorry, what was that? Did you say the, the, the bogey team recently? <laughs> yes. Because Everton have been a pretty bogey team recently. <laughs> Kelly, we've had some um, great texts about you. Oh, thanks, guys. Uh, living and listening in the Midlands, but a bit of Kelly Betts in the morning will do. Gwah. Thanks. Who sent it? Adam Pardon. No, I'm Kelly. Who sent it? Adam Pardon. No, I'm Kelly. Who sent it? Adam Pardon. No, who sent it? Because Everton have been a pretty bogey team recently. OK, you do the next link, but you do it in the voice of Mr T. No! Because we didn't really get to hear that properly on Friday's show. So go on. I do not voice, fool! That's Louis Armstrong! No. <laughs> Here's my... Uh, um, oh, it's similar, yes. Oh, Louis Armstrong! Ah, Mr T. Anyway, you going to do it? Matty Bum Bum called back in. Good morning. You sound like a, a ray of sunshine on this cold, miserable January morning. I'm, of course, joking. You sound as miserable as hell. Mm. There we go. Well, the, the, the famous, the famous this, Matt Grunt. You. The famous Matt Grunt of discontent. <laughs> oh, and the evil laugh as he plots to take over the world. <laughs> What's your beef? Matty Bum Bum? You criticising people again. So what, who have I criticised, Matty Sam Bum Bum? Allardyce. Sorry? About his bogey team. Say that again. You're on about Sam Allardyce from West Ham. West Ham manager, he is... Everton was... He said he was a bogey team. Say that? What did he say? Uh, Everton's our bogey team. Right. You don't know anything about football. Hey, There's not a lot you know about. Hey, you, hey, Matty Bum Bum. you to criticise people. You, you talk Calm a lot of down. crap. Calm down. I can't understand you here. Hey, Matty Bum Bum. Yeah, don't you take Calm the Calm down. <laughs> hey, Matty Bum Bum, calm down. There you go again. Calm down, hey fatty bum bum. I calm down, sweet sugar dumpling. I calm down, hey fatty bum bum. I calm down, let me tell you something. I calm down, no, not because you're so big and fat. Don't believe I'm afraid of that. Self praise is no recommendation. I'm looking for creation. Fatty boom boom, I calm down. Sweet sugar dumpling, I calm down. Hey, fatty boom boom, I calm down. Let me tell you something, I calm down. Don't need a look like mouse, but I want all a bread. I won't stop trying till I drop down dead. Never let your big size fool you. The cooler day I be cool. I wouldn't stop trying till I drop down dead. 
I've got a great story for you. Yeah, it's about Matty Bo- Sorry. Yes, it's about this tune. I had dinner last night with Colin Berry, yeah. the radio legend that is, yep. and uh, whilst we were having dinner, he was playing that tune. I kid you not, Wowzers. he'd heard it on your show yesterday Wowzers. morning. He dug it out. He was playing it <laughs> over some who, pork belly. Who sang, uh, who sang Hey Matty Bum Bum? It was... Carl Malcolm. Carl Malcolm. Is he dead? I'm not totally sure. Let's get him on the show. Dead yes. or alive, Carl Malcolm is coming on the show well, to do this alive. song. I thought it was Kenny Rogers. <laughs> Sorry, Matty Bum Bum? I thought it was Kenny Rogers. Have you that. have you calmed down? <laughs> yes, I've calmed Matty, down. Matty, say hello to Janet. Hello, Good Janet. Morning. Hello, Janet. Good have morning. we got any Kenny Rogers there? Could you repeat that, please? We want Kenny Rogers. Uh, I don't know who he is. Oh, sorry. I You're as sad as Ian. I am a very sad person. I. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me something else, Janet. Why don't you tell us the name of the songs after you've played them, like you just played Morrissey a while ago, and you never tell us the name of the songs? Why? Well, you've just said, please, Janet, I don't play the songs. Well, you want to sort it out. It's it's a bit... drives me mad. Unfortunately, I don't present the programme. If I presented the programme... Uh, maybe I could give it a different slot. Yes, you would. It would be far better program if you were presenting the program, Janet. I think. I don't because think Three Counties Radio would agree with you. Yes, there's hundreds of people that would agree with me because he's going downhill fast. Well, I think we have to try and support him in that case. He needs a. Well, job, you can't he? support. You can't support people like him. Oh, I think you can try. I think he's related to Jonathan Ross. He's got a young family. You need to support him. He's got to... Well, it's a shame. I feel sorry for his family. (laughs) 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 Is it snowing yet with you? No, no, no. Right. Well, at Ashridge, we've got two and a half centimetres of snow, and it's... Could, hot. could you tell me what that is in inches? Uh, one inch. Thank you. That's very good. That's why I like you, Janet. Can you not convert? Surely you're not going to let people take advantage of you by being unable to convert. No. <laughs> Justin, yes. What you got for us? Uh, I think we just had some new romance blossom there. We know wow. Matt's. We know Matt's on his own. These, sadly, you know. But I, yeah, I think it's that cheeky laugh he's got. I think it's a winner. It doesn't mean that life should be over. The romantic life should be over. Absolutely. Kenny G. Yeah, you spoke about Kenny yesterday, <laughs> and I was, I was, um, I was very offended by your comments about uh, Kenny G. Offended. The, Shut up, you plum. The legend that is Kenny G. So yeah. what I've done, um, I've gone off into my office here, uh, which is where everything that I need to make a radio package. Is that the same office? Is that the, the serial killer office? Yeah, but you haven't asked for any more serial no, killer I, profiles, I thought you, so I thought you they, they've deli- changed the office now. Just deliver one, one a week, you plum. It's now called the package office. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm here <laughs> at the moment, oh, um, surrounded by technology, and I've put a little piece together for you about Kenny G, some, some history and also whether people still love him on the streets. This is going to turn you. Let's talk Kenny G. Kenneth Bruce Gorlick, Songbird, a big fat tune with a capital T.
Experts estimate there are 3.2 million people walking this planet right now because of this classic, officially the make love sound of the 1980s. He started playing the sax at the age of just 10, and he's now sold nearly 75 million units, including Breathless, quite simply the best-selling instrumental album of all time. And now he has a new generation of fans after appearing with his beautiful perm in a Katy Perry music video. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. He was also an early investor in Starbucks. Next time you have a mocha frap, think of him. And he can fly a seaplane. But do the streets still feel Kenny? <laughs> what do you think? Good morning, madam. You well? Well, well. Lovely. The Beatles or Kenny G? Kenny G. The Rolling Stones or Kenny G? Kenny G. Bross or Kenny G? Kenny G. What did you have for breakfast? Kenny G. Wow, you cheeky little thing, you. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Kenny G. Hashtag still rocking people's world in 2015. <laughs> there you go. The proof again. <laughs> I'm not sure one person repeatedly saying Kenny G is proof. Every question was Kenny G. <laughs> no matter what the question was, it was Kenny G. You're such an was idiot. Kenny G the safe word or something? <laughs> oh, she was a big Kenny fan. Well, I've got others. If you want to hear the other fans, that's fine. But I just thought she was the uh, creme de la creme. Here's a question I'm going to regret asking. Dave, did you ever play with girls' toys? Yeah, mate. All the time. Would you like to expand? Yeah, little dollies, you know. Yeah, I always carry a little dolly in me, in me hand. Yeah, that's what now, that question, hasn't it? Now? Pardon? You do that now, do you, Dave? No, 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 no. Oh, it was a joke. Yeah, it's a joke. Yeah. Oh, oh, Dave, you oh, must Dave. tell us when you're going to do a joke. Oh, he did. Good <laughs> David! Oh. You've yeah. got to oh, tell us when you're going to do yeah. a joke. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. well, tell us. Yeah, well, All right, I, so, so do it again, right? So yeah. uh, you're going to do a joke, yeah? No, no, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk serious okay. today. Well, you're, you're, uh, yesterday. OK, uh, you're going to tell us a joke, right? And so uh, here we go. go. Dave? Yeah? Did you ever uh, play with girls' toys? No. Oh, I thought you played with dollies. No, no, that's a joke. No, I'm not... <laughs> Flip it. I know, mate, but we didn't... You know. I know now, but I didn't know when you were saying it. I thought it was just another one of your boring stories. Well, because we know you've no. got a toy tiger in your car. Yes. So why would yeah. you so, Dave, here, here we go. Here comes a joke. Two right? of them. Yeah. Here comes, a, here comes a joke. Dave. Yes? Do you play with girls' toys? No. Oh. Kath, you explain it to him. Dave? When yes, he says yes, that, yes. say what you said before. Why are you, why are you changing it? I know that because we like to keep comedy joke. fresh, but... Um, that, was a coach, uh, that was a joke, Kath. I know, well, that's what we're trying to get you to do again. Oh, uh, yeah. OK, you ready? Yeah. Okay, here it comes. Here so, Dave? Yeah? Do you play with girls' toys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Dave, you going to buy Charlie Hebdo? Who's that? Who's Charlie Hebdo? Never heard of him or her. Do you... You've been listening to the news in the past week? Yes. Right, I'll ask you again. Are you going to buy Charlie Hebdo? Oh, I know what you're talking about now. But I thought that was called Charlie. Actually, if you thought that was confusing, wait until you hear about Mark's life. We were talking about stepchildren and whether or not you have to love them. Well, many of you called in, but this was the one that made us all say, what the heck? I hope my parents aren't listening, but if they are, I love them very much. But? Uh, but uh, they got married by the time I was about, I think, 25 or 30. They, been, Mum had been married five times Flipping and Dad had been married four times. Blimey! When they, when my mum and dad split up originally, they um, they swapped couples with another couple, so that one was living at the top of the road and we were living at the bottom. 
And then when I came back, I lived in Hollywood when I was 18. And when I came back at 20, dad had become my bro- my uncle. Because mum had married my dad's brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> And then when I came screaming out of the closet, they they, they had the gall to ask me why. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! But, so, but I do so, love them. so who I is do love who? Them. So uh, oh, there's so many. Tell me, we've only got ten minutes left. We can't unravel yeah, this. Well, so, I, I mean, it's a nightmare. I mean, you know, who, are your, who, little... are you, who are your parents? How many parents have you got then? Oh, well, they're all over the place. Mother's, Mother's Day is a nightmare. You know, it cost me a fortune. So your third, <laughs> your, your, your third stepdad, let's say. Well, my first stepdad, I didn't. Uh, when my mum split up, when they when they swapped, yeah. when, and, and dad was living at the top of the road. Um, the step, the, the, the partner, my mum's new partner, was it was just awful. It was the worst experience. I mean, he just didn't have anything to do with us whatsoever. And, and did you, uh, when that happened, did you say, Mum, this fella's a loser, he's, he's being horrible uh, to us? No, because I was nine, it was, it, was, it was quite young and, you know, but he, he had nothing to do with us, you know, he would was, he was sit in his room and his kids were up the road and um, it was, a, yeah, it was a, a horrible experience. And he, he is later, he apologised, but it was a little bit too, little too late. Yeah. You know? And are you in touch um, with all of your, so hang on, you've got like uh, uh, nine parents, have I got that right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't think my, I've got two step uh, step brother and step sister that my mum had with her first, you know, new partner, and and I, I, I well, but all the kids, we we don't, I don't think of them as step kids, as step brothers. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love them all. Them, I think of them are just as brothers and sisters. Are you in touch with all of your all of your step parents? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, one's I think one's dead. Um, uh, my dad got married in America before he came over here, and, and unfortunately, she died as well. So, uh, but the ones, the ones in this country, yes, yes. And were there any? This is so. This is brilliant. Were there any of your step parents or uh, re, uh, your, your mum or your dad um, that was completely against you being gay, or was everybody support? How did that work? Uh, uh, no, well, most of them have been fine. You know, my my dad was horrified, right, um, to start with, uh, but he's been the best. Since then, you know, he, uh, you know, my partner, uh, <laughs> one of my first partners was from was from Brixton. We all worked together in a in a, fa- in a family business, and uh, my my brother works with me. And he said, "Dad, Mark's got something he wants to tell you. He's got a new partner. He's from Brixton, and he's black." Oh, and my, <laughs> and I bet and your my, dad would have hated that. My dad was from Chicago, and he just turned around in his, in his big chair and he said, "Son." You're testing our love. <laughs> Wowzers. Mark, he's Mark we've, he's cool. He's we've, super cool. we've never spoken before, have we? Uh, no, I don't think so, no. Well, listen, no, I, I, I really didn't... appreciate your call. You've got a brilliant laugh. Thank you so much, Mark. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, Cathy, you want to do this bit? Yeah. Every Friday between 7.30 and 8, we open the doors and let you all in. All the I hordes it... standing outside. All the who? Hordes. No, <laughs> not them. I... But if they were to come too, that's Everybody okay. is welcome. I call it the open door policy. Yeah. I call it dropping Fridays. I know. We um, need to have a meeting. We don't. Uh, the meeting is happening now. and We're calling it the open door policy. It's... Hashtag open door policy. OK. It sounds controversial. Hashtag I rubbish. I um, ringing sick day. Right, hashtag nothing to do with you anymore. Oh. Hashtag... <laughs> Respect your elders and your better lookers. Oh, well, I will when they come in. So you're the elder, I'm the better looker. Is that what you're saying? Respect us. Mm. Respect us. Respect us. <laughs> I was going to break into a song. But Which song were you going to think of? R E S P. Tay 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 tay. Take or leave us, only please believe us. We ain't never gonna be respectable. Exactly. Respectable. Which is why I can't respect you. You just answered your own question we through the medium re- of 80s pop. Carry on. Every Friday between 7.30 and 8, we open the doors to let you all in. Done it's that something bit. we're calling yeah. dropping Fridays. No, we hashtag, <laughs> hashtag open door policy, because it sounds like immigration. What? It's controversial. Really? Carry on. This week, Andrew 1, Andrew 2 and Stephen popped in. Stephen doesn't have a surname like Andrew 1 and Andrew 2. <laughs> Then Natasha came in with her four children. Three of them were very eager well, to sing. No. One of them was a waster or baby, whichever two, one you want to call it. Two of them were eager to sing. We had to remove Shaquille from the studio. For, for biting. He went absolutely 
bonkers, didn't he? Absolutely bonkers. We managed to calm him down. Who did he bite? Oh, uh, he, 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 he bit... He boat. He boat. He boat. He boat. He boat Stephen. Andrew, too. And then I could see him eyeing up my shin, and it was like, out. There's something about this studio that makes people go feral. Yes, there is. Anyway. Anyway, thanks, Natasha, for bringing your boys in. They're delightful. If anybody wants to turn up... Well, let's listen to them, and then we'll do the, the business for uh, hashtag open door policy. Yeah. So Hashtag call in drop sick. in Friday. Hashtag n- none of your business, Kelly. Hashtag just get on with the reading of this. Mm. I mean, saying this spontaneously. Here's what happened on drop in Friday. <laughs> Jamal, I know you're seven. Shaquille, 12? No, no, five. He's doing a five. Tyler, 15? No. 18? No. Eight, eight years old. And do your wives know that you're here? What's? (laughs) We don't got one. Sorry? We don't got any. Why not? Good-looking guys like you, why are you not married? Yeah, because we're only little children. Oh, okay. Well, no, that's no, that's not nothing. To, no reason to stop you getting married. Uh, what do you want? What do you want to be when you grow up, Shaq? Mm. I definitely know what that is. What do you want to be when you grow up? Tyler was here for me. Go on, Tyler. What does he want to be when he grows up? <laughs> when he, what Shaquille wants to be when he grows up is an archaeologist to dig up dinosaur bones and shout. Wow. That's what I wanted to be. Yeah, really? And run a fish and chip shop. <laughs> what are you going to sing for us, fellas? Um, probably the same. I'm not being funny, boys. You had ten minutes to think about this. You just, we just had the news and the weather. We are, we're going to sing um, the song that Jamal sung yesterday. Beautiful. Greatest hits. Why not? Away you go, fellas. <laughs> OK. As well. well, that was hashtag open door policy, and we're doing it every Friday between half seven and eight in the morning. Hashtag Friday free for all. Hashtag we're all just friends having classic bands. Hashtag tribunal. Hashtag <laughs> hash. So if you want to turn up, you do. You just rock up to the, the door any time between... Well, you can start turning up about 20 past seven. You can't come in until half past. You have to wait outside. Uh, and any time up until eight o'clock, you just wander in. You come and sit with us and we have a chat. You may get the whole 30 minutes dedicated to you. You may get just a glimpse, a, a little look in. But you're all welcome. Bring the kids, bring the dogs, bring the granny, bring whatever. We've had a promise of a giant rabbit at some point. We have had the promise of a giant rabbit. Oh, how's it going to get here? Just on the bus? On the hop... Oh, hey! Hey! On that bombshell, we say goodbye, Internet. Goodbye. Hashtag. Goodbye, Internet. Thanks for listening to this free download from BBC Three Counties Radio, your local radio station for beds, hearts and bucks, on FM, AM, digital radio, and online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. 